ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم قال الله عز وجل في القران الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار all praise are for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we thank him we glorify him we seek his help and aid and we ask allah to forgive us we ask allah to protect us from the evils of ourselves and from the sins that we commit indeed whoever allah guides there is none who can misguide and whoever he causes to go astray there is none who can guide i testify that there is none deserve to be worshiped except allah and i testify that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his slave and messenger verily the best of speech is the book of allah and the best of guidance is the guidance of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated and every religious innovation is a bid'ah and every bid'ah is a misguidance and every misguidance will be in the fire of hell may allah protect all of us from the fire of hell amen my brothers and my sisters the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a very prophetic statement bada al islam ghariba wa sayaudu ghariba kama bada fatuba lil ghuraba that islam began as something strange or as a stranger and it will return as something strange the same way it began or as a stranger so glad tidings of paradise to the strangers this is such a prophetic statement of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's a statement that we can see its fulfillment the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke about what will happen in the future and predicted it and when we look at our muslim history and the state of the muslims today in non muslim countries we can see that this is being fulfilled so what's the meaning of this hadith first let's consider how islam started he said the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that islam started as a stranger stranger in belief stranger in practice the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with a few muslims around him the beliefs that they had seemed strange to the people around them the practices that they had seemed strange to the people around them 
Sometimes they had to hide these beliefs and practices. Their practices seemed strange to the people around them. They were a small minority. And as a result of that, they were considered strangers. Guraba. And the Prophet wasallam said that this will go away as, as Islam progressed and gained strength. And more and more people believed, and more and more people accepted Islam and followed it. And it was no longer a stranger in Medina. It was no longer a stranger in Mecca. It was no longer a stranger in the whole of Arabian Peninsula. Yet, the Prophet wasallam said that it will return to the same state where it was a stranger. And though this could be in complete reference to the last days, in partial fulfillment, we can see it in our days. Where Islam will be a stranger in some places when it comes to the beliefs and the practices. And we are finding it more and more today all over the globe, where Muslims are living in non-Muslim countries. That is when a Muslim especially lives in a non-Muslim country and people don't understand what Islam is all about or they may have wrong ideas about Islam and this Muslim man or woman wants to practice their Islam and wants to say that I am a Muslim they will encounter this gurba, this strangeness that people will look at them as if they're strangers, as if they're strange, they're doing some weird stuff. But even within a Muslim family, a Muslim community, a Muslim society, and sometimes also in a Muslim country, you will find that there is a strangeness in belief. That how many people actually know what Islam stands for? How many people actually know what's halal and haram? How many people actually know and have tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala versus shirk in him? How many people in fact adopt the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam versus those who don't? How many people want to adopt a God-oriented life, an Islam-oriented life some people will go to colleges and they will find themselves alone in a sea of atheism, in a sea of agnosticism, hostility towards religion. So when they say that I'm a Muslim or I want to pray or I want to dress this way or I want to follow Quran and Sunnah, then there is pressure around him. There is tension, there is friction. And when a person says in his life, even in his own Muslim family, in his own Muslim community, that I want to stay away from bid'ah, and I want to follow the Quran and the Sunnah, and I want to stay away from the Haram, and only follow what's halal, and only eat what's halal, and even furthermore, I want to stay away from all the mutashabihat, doubtful matters, then that person will be seen as a stranger. They will say, the people around them will say that this is the world we live in today. People lie and cheat. How come you are not lying and cheating? People all over are doing these things. How come you are not? And when he says that I don't want to believe like everybody else believes if, it's, if it is wrong, and I don't want to adopt this rant and this style from this popular culture, and I don't want to be like everybody else if it's wrong, then he will stand alone. He will stand alone as a stranger, stranger in his belief and his practice. So my brothers and my sisters, there is this partial ghurbah, partial strangeness that a Muslim 
will encounter and feel today. And that is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Fatuba Lil Guraba, that give glad tidings of paradise for the strangers. So if you find yourself in a situation, expect great reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Why? Because you're holding on to your Islam despite the pressure around you. Because you're holding on to what you believe in despite resistance from others. Despite people telling you that this doesn't work anymore. Or, or this, despite people telling you that this is changing times. Or you're losing when you hold on to it. You still hold on to it. And there will be times, my brothers and my sisters, that there will be times when you feel as if you're holding on to a hot, burning coal. And that's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, يَأْتِي عَلَى النَّاسِ زَمَانٌ يَكُونُ فِيهِ صَابِرٌ عَلَى دِينِهِ كَالْقَابِدِ عَلَى الْجَمْرِ that there will come a time when people, those among them are patient and holding on to their religion, will be like holding on to a hot burning coal. So imagine my brothers and my sisters holding on to a piece of hot burning coal and it's burning your skin and it's burning your flesh and it's reaching the bone Yet, you refuse to let go. You refuse to let go. And all of your body is reacting and telling you, just let go, then you will let go of that pain. And it will go away. That is, if you stop practicing this way, if you stop praying this way, if you stop following the Quran and Sunnah this way, then it will go away that if you stop demanding to live a proper Islamic life, then the pressure will go away. And you refuse to do that. Yet you say, no, I will not be like everybody else. I will hold on to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. And that, for that, my brothers and my sisters, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Fatuba lil guraba, glad tidings of paradise for the strangers. And one of the rewards that they will receive is explained in another hadith of the Prophet. ﷺ. He says, Inna min waraikum ayyama sabr, fi hinna mithlul qabri al jamr. That the Prophet ﷺ was speaking to his companions. And he said, they will come after you days of patience. During that time, holding on to one's religion will be like holding on to a burning coal. That the Prophet ﷺ said, during those days of patience, the one who will be holding on to what you're holding on to today. He was speaking to his companions that the one who will be holding on to their, to their Islam will have the reward of 50 among you. Kalu ya Rasulallah, ajru khamsina minna aw minhum. Kal, ajru khamsina minkum. So they said, O Messenger of Allah, they sought clarification. They said, do you mean 50 of them or 50 of us? And the Prophet Wasallam said, 50 of you. So the ulama have said that because at, at that time, the, the Guraba will find no helpers and supporters to promote the truth. They will be alone. And because they're alone, they will be like strangers. And when they perform an act, they will be rewarded like 50 companions. 
It doesn't mean that they will be better than the companions. No. Because the companions, they had the, the, the opportunity to be with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and nothing matches that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that in that particular act and that particular choice, they will earn the reward of 50 companions. But my brothers and my sisters, this ghurbah that we find ourselves in, in different parts of the world, when it comes to Islamic belief and practice, should not make us desperate, should not make us lose hope, and, we, and should not propel us to lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As one of the ulama have said and has written, he said, when Muslims sometimes encounter calamities and difficulties and they find themselves facing atrocities from people they, and they start crying and wailing and said, what has happened to Islam? What has happened to Muslims? And they become despondent and desperate and very sad. This is not what they were commanded to do or how they were supposed to react. He said instead, they have to realize that everything that has happened to them is because of their own faults and because of their own sins. And the key for transformation lies in their own selves. They need to go back to Iman in Allah. They need to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They need to have form conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They need to have tawakkul ala Allah. They need to fix themselves and move forward. Don't let those events shake their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this ghurbah, this strangeness we are talking about, should not be and would not be a permanent one. Islam being a stranger will not be a permanent one. If we endure it, we are not enduring it because it's a permanent one. We are enduring it because we want to change it. And whenever Muslims are faced with difficulties and considered as strangers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send people to teach Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send people to teach the religion of Islam and their practice of Islam will be revived until the ghurbah is slowly removed from that place. So if we are experiencing difficulties in these days and we are feeling like strangers even within our family or within our society, within our community, the key is not to become desperate and give up. The key is not to follow everybody around you. The key is not to conform with society around you. The key is to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The population of this world just imitate the popular brands and the popular fashion. So the key is not to conform and to imitate everybody else. You have to stand as a leader. It is better to stand as a leader in virtue than to be a follower in vice and sin. The companions radiallahu anhum asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Prophet of Allah, who are the guraba? Who are the strangers? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Alladheena yaslihuna idha fasad nas That he said, those who are upright and virtuous while the people around them are corrupt. When people around them are corrupt. So they have two options. The first option is that either they can be upright and virtuous themselves, even if the entire society around them is corrupt, and even if they are ridiculed or harassed, they are formed in their belief in Allah, and they are formed in their tawakkul in Allah, and that will help in changing the gurbah because they will hold on to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And the second option 
الَّذِينَ يُصْلِحُونَ إِذَا فَسَدَ النَّاسِ That those who reform, those who reform society when the people around them are corrupt. So this is the second option, which is better than the first option. That is, they reform society, they reform people around them. That they are not content only with themselves. They are not content only to have formed iman and conviction in themselves, but they want to change it around them. They want to change the corruption around them. And my brothers and my sisters, they want, even if the society is corrupt and people around them are corrupt, they are not content to leave it as it is. And they are determined to change it, to change the society around them and to bring them back to following the Quran and the Sunnah. And this is the way to remove the ghurba that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is talking about. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اما بعد one of the ulama also wrote hundreds of years ago before muslims were leaving for non muslim land and inhabit them he said that allah grants virtue respect and honor to those who uphold their religion. And even if they, they find themselves in non-Muslim lands, as individuals or as groups, if they hold on to their religion, they will earn the respect of the non-Muslims. They will honor them, and they will respect them more than Muslims who are not upholding their religion. And if that community or individuals are being harassed or condemned, it's because of their own faults, because they are not upholding their religion. Because if they do, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their protector. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhan nabiyyu hasbuka Allahu wa man ittaba'aka min al mu'mineen, that, O Prophet, Allah is sufficient for you and sufficient for those who follow you from among the believers. So what is sufficient? It is sufficient in protection, sufficient in planning for you, sufficient in everything. If they are holding on to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah azza wa jal will protect them. Now someone will, will say, wouldn't they face any harm? He said, yes, everyone, Muslim and non-Muslim, will face some harm in this world. This is the destiny of this earth, that if you're a human being, you will face some harm and evil. But the difference between those who have Iman and those who uphold their religion, the harm will be less. Their harm will be less than those who do not uphold their religion. He says, look at the Prophet Wasallam's life and look at the early Muslims' life. He was harmed in Mecca and the Muslims were harmed in Mecca also. But while they were being harmed, Allah was protecting them. Allah was protecting the Prophet and the Muslims. And for the Muslims, Allah first gave them a refuge in Habasha, Abyssinia. And the king said, you're free in my land to practice your Islam as you wish. When did the king said that? After they uphold their religion. They didn't compromise their religion. So it was after they uphold their religion and didn't compromise it. Then he said, Allah give them refuge in Medina. And that was more honor and protection. And he saved the Prophet from Mecca 
and from the plots of Mecca. And he said, Allah increased the honor and strength of Muslims in Medina constantly while degrading the non-Muslims in Mecca constantly. And while the Muslims are going through all of that, Allah will reward them in the hereafter as well while making them taste the sweetness of Iman. So he is saying, in other words, don't think or don't ever think that if you compromise your religion or you compromise your faith, that the punishment or the, 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 the trials and the tribulations will be less. You will be tested even further and more and more even if you are met immediately with some sort of consolation or some good comment or some good attitude from people around you, that's only short term. You will face more and more tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you follow the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you hold on to it, even though you may be alone, or just a few in your society or community after that initial test Allah Azza wa Jal will show you the respect and the honor that you deserve so my brothers and my sisters before I close I would like to to mention some of the ways that we can combat this gurba how are what are some of the ways that we can combat the strangeness that we are facing. First of all, through belief and through knowledge. That we have to have firm belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to increase our knowledge. We have to move away from Islam of Ada. Islam of Ada is Islam of habit, an inherited Islam that you inherited from your parents. That when you grow up, you don't know why you're praying, you don't know why you're fasting. That's Islam of Ada. You have to move away from Islam of Ada to Islam of conviction. Where you're convinced and you understand why you're doing certain things. Because as long as you're living in a non-Muslim country, it's a challenge for you. You will be tested. They will ask you all different sorts of questions, especially at your workplace. Why you pray? Why you fast? And if you don't know, then that's a big challenge for you. So we need to educate ourselves. We need to move away from Islam of Ada to Islam of conviction and understanding. The next, second thing is, we need to increase our practice of Islam because knowledge without practice doesn't work. Knowledge without practice is more philosophical. Knowledge without practice is just information. So we need to practice our Islam. We need to practice our Islam, our Salah, our Zakah, or increase our voluntary acts. And the third thing we need to do is to increase our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get closer to Allah. Have greater Iman and greater tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to strengthen our connection, our, our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this will be the driving force to uphold our tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will, this will always strengthen our tawakkul and our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the next thing is that we should not fall prey to the temptations of the dunya. We should not fall prey to the temptations of the dunya. The dunya is there. We can't be chasing after the dunya. That we should only take from the dunya what we need for our hereafter. That's all. The dunya is temporary. We should utilize the dunya for our permanent abode, for our permanent Jannatul Firdaus, eternal life in Jannatul Firdaus. That's our goal. And in this way, the gurba will, will be removed. We should never lose focus of this goal that our goal is to strive for the hereafter. So this world is just a means to get there, just a preparation to get there. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
We ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the most merciful, to protect us from these times and grant us strong iman that we can stand the trials and tribulations of these times. O oh Allah, help our Muslim brothers and sisters in China, in India, in Kashmir, and in all parts of the world who are facing trials and tribulations. Strengthen their iman and relieve them from their hardship and their sufferings. O oh Allah, we ask you to establish iman in our hearts. We ask you to establish iman and Islam and total conviction in our hearts. Make us of those who understand Islam clearly and practice Islam in our lives despite the pressure around us. Ya Allah, make us of those who teach Islam to, to the people. Make us of those who spread Islam in this land and elsewhere. Ya Allah, make us of those who hold on to the Quran and the Sunnah of your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and pattern our lives with it. And if you make us of those who are among the strangers, the Guraba, reward us immensely, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, make us of those who hold on to the truth despite the pressure up around us. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you for all the good in this life and the hereafter. We seek refuge in you from all the evils around us. Keep us protected from shaitan and from the whispers of shaitan. Protect our families and our children from the evils around us. Ya Allah, protect and keep our youths rightly guided and help them to practice Islam, to be form believing men and women of tomorrow. Ya Allah, protect them from all the evils and fitna around them and keep them steadfast and rightly guided on the Suratul Mustaqim, the straight path. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Allahumma ina nas'aluka al-jannah وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونسألك الخير ما سألك عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من الشر ما استعاذك منه عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم احفظنا بالإسلام قياما واحفظنا بالإسلام قعودا واحفظنا بالإسلام ركودا اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم فاطر السماوات والأرض أنت ولي في الدنيا والآخرة توفنا مسلمين والحكنا بالصالحين اللهم إنا نسألك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب عمل يقرب إلى حبك يا حي يا قيوم وبرحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وقيم الصلاه